Good morning, good morning. Hope all is well. Hope everyone's doing all right. All right, I hope everybody had a great weekend. I see we only have two logged on today, so I guess we're going to get started. I won't hold you guys. So last class, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, last class we did uh, 4.1. Last week we did 4.1. And then Wednesday, I decided to let that just be a review day. So uh, we're going to start with 4.2 today, do 4.2 and 4.3. And then that'll be, it. that'll be it for chapter four. Uh, content. Uh, chapter four is content, and then we can uh, talk about how we're going to move going forward. So we're looking at 4.2 least squares regression. So the least squares regression line is the line that minimizes the sum of the squared errors, or in, in other words, residuals. So we'll talk about why that's important in a little bit. It's also the line that best explains the relationship of the data. So last class, we did the correlation coefficient. On uh, 4.2, we're looking at least squares regression. And here's just a generic um, picture or depiction of what it means for a line, the best line that sums up the relationship of the data. So this is what the least squares regression line would do for us. This is going to help us to be able to predict future values, um, you know, according to the data that has been observed. Right, can I scroll up? And if I go up too far. So finding the leap of uh, the regression line, the squares regression line, there are going to be two ways that you guys will be able to do so. They're going to give you certain information in which, uh, the first way is they'll give you a certain amount of information in which you'll be able to use these formulas. And then the other way will be by, uh, they'll give you all of the data. And then you can put it in um, you know, easycalculation.com or app. And so we're going to do both of them just to make sure you're clear on how we will operate with this information that they give us. So first, uh, the formula, the least square regression line would be in this form. Y hat is equal to B1x plus B0 or B0. So this is considered Y hat when you have that. Uh, with triangle without the third side is considered the hat symbol. So that's why hat. Um, and then how you would find B1 would be R, which is your correlation coefficient. We talked about that last class. And then S of Y with S of X. That's the standard deviation of Y with standard deviation of X. So all this stuff is going to come together once you put numbers to it. And um, But just tell me what these, these represent. Then B0 is going to be Y bar, which is the mean of Y minus B1 times X bar, which is the mean of X. So notice you do have to find B1 first because that's a part of your calculation of B0. And let me see if I can do this in here. All right. So this is just reemphasizing what I just mentioned, what R means, X bar, S sub X, Y bar, and S sub Y. Um, your X values, don't forget, we talked about that last class. Your X values are your explanatory variables. Your Y values are your response variables. 
Okay. You can just let those guys down. All right, let's go look. I mentioned this earlier as well, the purple statement regression line is used to predict an outcome based on previous observation. I think I will say regression line. So, in this first example, they, they tell us to find the regression line. They give us R, they give us X bar, they give us S sub X, they give us Y bar, they give us S sub Y. So when they give you the information in this way, then all you're doing is plugging it into the formulas according to what you know, we just established, and then creating your regression line. Okay. So once again, they give us R, which is the correlation coefficient, X bar, S sub X, Y bar, Y sub X. So the first thing we want to do is find B1. And remember, that's going to be R times S sub Y over S sub X. So it's negative 9 point, negative 0.946 times 5.612486 over 2.44949. Now, once again, remember, they gave us this. So in this scenario, in this example, they gave us these numbers. All right, um, throwing that in your calculator, you get negative 2.1676 for B1. Any questions on B1? All right, so once you have B1, you can find B0. That's Y bar minus B1 times X bar. That would be 10 minus, and make sure you don't lose a negative when you do your substitutions. In this case, we have a minus sign that's in the formula, but there's also negative 2.1676. Or also, if they ask you for this as a part of your answer, let's say if they say, what is B1? then um, make sure you hold true to how many decimal places they want. They may want three, they may want four. Um, if I round it to four, uh, that problem probably said round it four decimal places. Also, I don't think I emphasize here, you know, B1 is your slope, and then B0 is your y-intercept, if they ask, if they reference it in that term. I don't know, I wrote it, but I didn't, you know, speak on it. All right, so let's go back to B0. So it's 10, time, 10 minus negative 2.1676 times four gives us 18.670. Any questions, any questions?
So once you have B1 and B0, you just use your regression formula, which is Y hat equal to B1X plus B0. And so B1 was negative 2.176. 2.1676, and then B0 was 18.6704. All right, so here I just emphasize that math lab will probably have this type of setup where they have your boxes where you can type in your data. And so whatever in front of X or attached to X, that's what would be B1. And the other number would be B0. Here I was just emphasizing this is the same thing. Notice that negative 2 point, negative 2.1676 is attached to X. It's just in the back. And then 186704 is in the front. And that's still negative you know, and 18 is still positive. So just saying rearranging the terms um, is still the same answer as long as 2.1676 is still attached to X and it's still negative 186704 is still positive. So questions on finding your regression line if they give you the information in this form. Right, can I scroll up? All right, so we have our data set down here, but I'll give you the directions first, give you a chance to write that down. So we want to find the regression line. Then we want to predict the distance the ball will travel when hit with a club head speed of 103 miles per hour. Then determine the residual for the predicted value from the result in B. Is the distance in the table above or below average among balls hit at 103 miles per hour? So I'll give you a chance to write that down and then we'll get into it. All right, so scrolling up, and of course, if I scroll up too far, please let me know. Now, this is the same um, data set uh, that we had from the previous section where we're doing the club head speed and distance of ball travel. So, all of this is the same. And we want to handle this information the same way. Go on to easycalculation.com. Go on to easycalculation.com, type in the data values, and then get our regression line. The last time we used it to get the correlation coefficient, this time we used it to get the regression line. Let's give you a chance to copy that before we go to another page.
also um, right here, see we got EXP. So this is my explanatory variable. This is my response variable. Just re-emphasizing what we talked about before. Explanatory variable explain, explains or is dependent or independent and response variable depends on what happens with the explanatory variable. The response variable responds to what's happening with the explanatory variable. So in other words, you know, this club, this golf club, we swing it. The harder you swing it, the faster the, uh, the golf club goes. So the faster it goes, the farther the ball travels uh, in most cases. So that's what we're talking about. Um, the distance will be in response to how hard you hit the, hit, the, hit the ball or how fast you swing the club. All right, so. Just re-emphasizing this process, remember, uh, just like I told you last class, your correlation coefficient and your regression line, you want to find something that's reliable to be able to calculate it for you. So regression line, easy calculator. So that's easycalculation.com. It's always a uh, reliable one that I've used in the past. This, we can add rows. But it's free. So that's what happens when you deal with free. Go ahead and type your values in there. Got one more. Mm -hmm. So from there, we calculate, and that gives us what we need our slope. This would be uh, B1 for us. Minus up B zero. And then uh, they put it in form for us. So you notice that 3.166 is attached to the X. That's our slope. And then our other number Y and up is not attached to, X, to the X. We just have to make sure to be careful with. with with which one we put beside X. All right, so any questions on that before I go back to the notes? So I'll, I'll, as always, make sure you go back and check your data values. Make sure you put in the proper data values if one of them is off. Calculate, you notice it changes our numbers. Now we got 58 instead of 55, 3.19 so 3.16 and so on. So that was just going from 275 to 276 from 274 to 275, just one data value. So you do have to be careful with what you do here. All right, so let me get this all. Let's add slow up my computer. All right, so that was step one. Step one was just found the regression line. And so you can do 3.166X minus 55.797 or Negative 55.797 plus 3.166x. Both of these are the same thing. 55 is still negative, 3.1 is still positive, and 3.1 is attached to the x in both cases. So we still have the same thing. Just have to be careful what you're attaching to x. So that was A. B is predict the distance the ball will travel when hit with the club head speed of 103 miles per hour. So what that means, you want to take 103 plug in for X and see what the regression line predicts would be the case when you swing it at 103 miles per hour. So plug it in there, 3.166 times 103 minus 55.797, that'll give you 270.3 yards. That is your prediction. 
according to the regression line. And the regression line is based upon your previous observation. All of these values from the chart created this regression line. <clears throat> so y hat is always going to be a prediction. Question is on A or B. All right. And then C, it says determine the residual for the predicted value is the distance to table above or below average among balls hit at 3 miles per hour. So residual, remember we talked about in our uh, earlier definition, residual and error are the same thing. So they are used interchangeably. And so the way you calculate your residuals, you do your observed Y minus the predicted Y. We just found our predicted Y right here at 270.3. Our observed Y at 103 miles per hour is right here. 103 miles per hour. When this person swung at 103 miles per hour, they hit the ball 274 yards. That was what was observed. That is what was observed, yeah. Now, if you didn't have this in the chart, you couldn't find a residual. You need an observed Y and a predicted Y. So that's all with the case. So that's what we have right here, our observed Y which is 274 predicted Y, 270.3. Notice the you know, notation Y is just the observed Y, Y hat is your predicted Y. And your subtraction, 274 minus 270.3. Notate down here, which one came from the chart, which one came from the equation. So what this means, it says the observation in the chart is above average balls hit at 103 miles per hour. And so in the purple, see I wrote, it's above because it is positive. So if this ended up being negative, then we would have said the observation in the chart is below average balls hit at 103 miles per hour. Because remember your predicted Y comes from the regression line, which is basically, remember it sums up your observations. And so that's the average based upon your observations. And this 274 is above greater than that. Questions, any questions? All right, can we scroll up? Is everybody good? No, oh, yeah. So 4.3. Last section out of chapter four, it's the coefficient of determination. Pretty short section. So it measures the proportion of total variation in the response variable that is explained by the regression line. Basically, it tells us how reliable the regression line is. It's the correlation coefficient squared.
right. It is denoted by capital R squared. It's between zero and one inclusive. All right, if the coefficient of determination is equal to zero, the regression line has no explanatory value. If it's equal to one, then the regression line explains 100% of the variation in the response variable. Problem before we go into the example. So example here, determine and interpret the coefficient of determination for the club head speed versus the distance. So we're going back to our previous example of data, club head speed and the distance, and we want to determine the coefficient of determination. So first we wanna find the co correlation coefficient. So we did that back in 4.1. So I'm not gonna revisit you know, that as a part of this process. Um, we found it to be 0 0.939. So the same data set, and then we went to uh, easycalculation.com, typed in data values, and we found the correlation coefficient. Mm -hmm. So then we wanna find a coefficient of determination, and we do that by squaring the correlation coefficient. So 0.939 squared is 0.882. And then you want to convert to a percentage, that's 88.2%. So once again, to find the coefficient of determination, all you're doing is squaring the correlation coefficient. That's all you're doing. All right, so to interpret, that means that 88.2% of the variation in the distance is explained by the regression line. 11.8% of the variation is explained by other factors. 
So in other words, you just do 88.2 minus 100, that gives you 11.8. Uh, other factors can be whether it be uh, you know, hitting the ball out in nature, whether it be wind, wind resistance, um, uh, maybe you uh, maybe you hit a bird or something, I don't know, <laughs> anything that could occur that would cause you to deviate. Maybe you twist your hips one way that you normally don't twist your hips. Um, you uh, swung it on that specific time. And if it deviates away from the norm, you know, there's just other factors that can play a role in that. But 88.2% of the time, uh, your regression line will be on point as far as predicting where the ball will go or at least be around about that. So that's what that means. It's 88.2% reliability for your regression line. Questions, questions, questions. All right, everybody good? Any questions before I move up? Everybody straight. Okay, so I'm gonna hold you guys to the assignments. So don't worry about that. But what you guys are here responsible for was right here. Once again, you're not doing assignment one or assignment two, though. So my last class, I said I wasn't gonna hold you guys to it as far as the sum was concerned. But you have homework, chapters one, two, three, and four. Um, if you haven't sent those definitions to me, uh, make sure you do so. Some people I still need to put their grades in, but if you got a response from me in the email saying that you got it, um, that I got it, then you know don't worry about it. You're good to go. I just need to put the grades in the math lab. And then I'm going to post test two today. But we already had test one posted. So these are everything you guys are here responsible for up to this point, up to date. All right. Questions on anything? Anybody? I do it in my screen. So next class, I'll open up the floor to see if anybody have any questions first. Um, we will probably do at least one section out of chapter five. Now that I think about it, we may have to do two because I won't see you next Monday. Next Monday is celebration of Juneteenth and we have that off. So yeah, probably have to do two sections out of chapter five next class, um, just because like I said, I won't see you on Monday. Um, so any questions on anything before we close out today? This closes out chapter four for us. And um, you have your two tests that will be available to you uh, shortly. Okay, so let's if you guys are good, I'm good. Yep, you have a great day as well. I appreciate that. Uh, everybody take care. You too, thank you. Thank you.